Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's been a little while since we've taken a look at any accessories for the Raspberry Pi 4, but recently I was surfing Amazon and I came across a cool little case that actually supports a 2.5 inch SSD or mechanical drive. I would personally go with an SSD. This is from Geekworm, known as the NAS Pi case, and as the name implies, yes, I guess it was intended to create a NAS out of your Raspberry Pi using this case here and a 2.5 inch drive, but this can also be used just as a standard Raspberry Pi case that supports an SSD for running your operating system from. In turn, you will get better performance out of the Raspberry Pi over a micro SD card because the whole operating system will be installed and running from a faster SSD. It's pretty easy to get this set up, and I'll show you how to do it in a second, but uh, I wanted to get this case put together. And this includes everything you need except for your Raspberry Pi and a solid state drive. This also supports active cooling with this PWM fully controllable fan, safe shutdown, safe reset, and basically everything you need in a desktop case for your Raspberry Pi. Assembly on this unit is fairly easy. We're going to start with the base here and install the solid state drive. So it's just going to plug right into this SATA and power. From the top side here, we can secure the SSD using some of the included screws. And once we have that drive mounted up and secured to the bottom plate, we can install the Raspberry Pi 4. Now the SSD is going to be connected to the Pi using one of the USB 3.0 ports. That's basically how we have to do it with all cases that support either an M.2 or SSD. This has the daughter board that plugs right into the micro HDMI and 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Just going to kind of bring everything out of the back. We have a 7-wire GPIO cable that's going to plug into the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, and then the other end is going to plug directly into that daughter board. And this is going to bring power right back to the Raspberry Pi and enable that safe shutdown and safe reset switch. So I've just mounted up the daughter board and the Raspberry Pi to that bottom plate using the included standoffs. Now it's time to mount that PWM fan. This is going to sit right on those standoffs we use to hold that Raspberry Pi down. And over here on this side with the seven wire GPIO connector, we need another standoff because that's gonna kind of mount right to the top of there just to keep everything lined up. And uh, I did have to unplug it as you can see, but we'll plug it right back in and it's gonna be secured with a single screw. And this just kind of gets it up out of the way. And uh, once we have this plug back in and the fan in the correct location, we can go ahead and put the four screws in just to hold everything down. and everything on the board is labeled. We have the fan plugged in, the extra power, and that seven pin GPIO wiring harness. All that's really left to do is slide this inside of the aluminum case and mount everything up. So what we have here is solid state drive support. We have safe shutdown, safe reset, and a cooling system built into this. And uh, in order to get this inside of the case, it just slides right in. It's super simple. All you really need to do is line up that front power button, Make sure nothing's blocking that fan. We do have ventilation for that fan. This is a full aluminum case. And once we have that power button lined up, just gonna kinda slot right in here. It's secured from the bottom with four screws and we also have a back plate to cover up everything. I mean, it looks really good once it's finished up. And here's the final product. We have our micro SD card slot up here, power button. On each side, there's not much going on, but we do have a little bit of ventilation just to keep that SSD nice and cool, or if you opt to use a mechanical drive. Round back, we do have access to all of our I.O., but remember, one of those USB 3.0 ports will be used up by that SSD. I do wish they would have replaced these micro HDMI ports with full size, but I can overlook that since I've already got the cables ready to go. It also comes with these rubber feet that you can place on here so it doesn't slide around on the desk. Ventilation for that fan up here, and this is going to be blowing directly on that RAM chip and CPU. And up front, our status LEDs are fully visible, including an SSD status LED right underneath that power button. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get this PWM fan set up, and we're going to get our operating system transferred from that micro SD to the SSD very easily. All right, so here we are with Raspberry Pi OS. This is being run from a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. As you see here, I have 50 gigabytes free. We can easily transfer the contents of the micro SD card over to the SSD. And as you saw with the assembly, it is installed. It's a fresh drive, so it's not showing up over here just yet. But before we do that, there are a few things you need to do to get this PWM fan up and running. Uh, over on their wiki page, they have all the information you need to get this up and running. And that's basically the only thing you're going to need to manually install from within Terminal. So uh, if you head right over here, make sure you do the update, follow all of their steps. 
Once you're rebooted, your power switch, safe shutdown, and PWM fan will be running. It's right here. It's not that hard. You're just going to copy and paste over to Terminal. I was going to cover it in this video, and I actually did it, but my recording software stopped working in the middle of it, so I'm not going to cover it here. Once you have the script installed and you got your fan running, it's time to transfer the contents from that micro SD card over to the SSD so we can get much faster speeds out of this thing. We're just going to go up here to the Raspberry Pi logo, Accessories, SD card copier. And basically what's going to happen here is the first we're going to copy from device, which is going to be our micro SD card. And we want to copy it to the SSD. I'm using that Kingston 240 gigabyte drive. We'll choose start. Yes. And now it's basically going to clone that SD card to the SSD. So everything that we've done so far will be available on that SSD once we remove the SD card and boot from that. Give this a little time to finish up. Once this is done, I'm going to move over to my desk and just show you it booting from that SSD. But in the meantime, I also wanted to run a few tests on this micro SD card just to show you the speed difference between the micro SD and the new SSD we have installed. It should be a tremendous difference. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this up from the SSD. We've got that micro SD card, which we'll is unplug that and turn the power on. Right now, it's booting from the SSD, and since we cloned our micro SD card, it's going to be the exact same operating system we were just using. It's just going to be running from a much faster drive. And in my experience, I get way faster boot times like you can see here, and it just feels overall a lot more snappier, especially when you're trying to access your file system. If you take a close look here, we have over 200 gigabytes free because we had a 240 gigabyte SSD here. I know it's a bit hard to see, but yeah, I mean, we're running from that solid state drive now and the whole operating system just feels a lot smoother because we're not relying on that micro SD card to do all the reading and writing. So even loading up something like YouTube is faster with an SSD or an M.2. And like I mentioned, I did run some speed tests on the micro SD card and we're going to face it off against that SSD. Uh, there is a built-in kind of diagnostics tool that'll just run a quick speed test on your internal storage to tell you how fast it is or if it meets the recommended speeds. So over on the left-hand side, we have the micro SD. On the right-hand side, we have the SSD. Sequential write on the micro SD was 19,029. Moving over to the SSD, 321,254. Random write speed on the micro SD card, 833, on the SSD, 11,821, and finally, random read speeds over on the micro SD, 2,620. When it comes to that SSD, it trumped it again at 12,291. So when it comes to sequential write, random write, and random read, that SSD destroys the micro SD card by leaps and bounds. And this does transfer to real world performance. You will feel the difference by running your Raspberry Pi 4 from an M.2 SSD or a 2.5 inch SSD for sure. So overall, when it comes to the NAS Pi case, I do like the design. It's very industrial, easy assembly, easy setup. And once everything's installed correctly and you're running from a solid state drive, you will up the performance of your Raspberry Pi. Now there are other cases on the market like the Argon One that use an M.2 and if you're into that, you can always go with a case like that. It's totally up to you. I personally like the design of both of these. This is just a bit different, looking super industrial, and in the end, it does perform well with the Raspberry Pi 4. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. It's been a while since I've taken a look at any accessories for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's kind of been a bit stagnant, so I was glad to see something new on the market. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave a link in the description. I'll also leave a link to the SSD that I use, because these Kingston 240 gigabyte drives seem to do really well over USB like this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.